to my YouTube channel, Journey, Our Child of God. Hallelujah. Today I want to thank you guys for tuning in for another video. And I also want to apologize for the last past two weeks. I did not do any video. And I would like to apologize for that because I should have sent out something. You know, to inform my subscribers, those who tune in all the time to watch my videos, to let them be aware of what's going on. So I do apologize. Now today, I'm excited another time. You guys must be wondering what's going on. You've seen all these balloons around and it's a, it's a boy, it's a girl. Then you look, you see Minnie and Minnie, Minnie Mouse. And my hat is saying, it's a girl, hallelujah. And now you see Minnie right here, it says, look who turns one, hallelujah. So let's follow a guest game. Guess what will I be talking about today? What will be my topic for this video? Please comment. Put your comments below and let me know if what you guessed was right. Hallelujah. Today, I mostly write down all of my scriptures that I am going to be using today. And I pray that, um, you know, I will continue to uplift somebody and be an inspiration out there for somebody and before I continue I would like to say you know, word of prayer bringing God into what I'm doing here God I thank you for today another day another day when I'm here on my YouTube channel to talk to people out in the world I pray oh God that you will sanctify my words and my words will touch somebody my words will make a difference in somebody's life i pray that i will do this in meekness in gentleness and i thank you for your love your grace and for your mercy continue to have your way holy spirit in jesus name again thank you for tuning into my channel journey of a child of god my name is karen johnson and today i want to start with this word from the Bible and this is what the word says as you do not know the way of the wind or how the bones grew in the womb of her who is with child likewise you do not know the word of God who has made everything can you believe it now I want to point out this it says bones the bones that grow in the womb can you imagine God is saying that you do not know how the bones grow in the womb the womb of a woman who is pregnant hallelujah I don't know if that's a little in there hallelujah but I <laughs> I'm a little excited to talk on this topic hopefully I'll do my best with it but in the beginning in Genesis 1 there God created many things but one of the things that he created in Genesis 1 verse 27 to 28, I'm going to read. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the hurt and subdue it rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the hair and over every living thing that move on the earth hallelujah and now today my topic is abortion hallelujah i don't know if anybody got that did anybody see that coming here hallelujah but my topic today is abortion and as a child of god i'm coming from the perspective of what god is expected of us as a child of god how god expects us to live how god expects us to please him hallelujah and god have his standard that we have to go by now when i look at the statistics of the amount of people who are doing abortion and the different states that involve and the reason behind why we need to have abortion and the worldview is telling us that we have a choice and because we women have a choice we're entitled to our own body 
but as a child of God, we are no longer of this world. We don't look at what the world say. We don't believe what the world say. The world say, but we believe in the word of God and what God is saying to us. Hallelujah! And we have that love of God inside of us, and because we are living for God. We have to please him. If we love him, he said that we will keep his commandment. And I searched through the Bible. I can't find anywhere where it talks about abortion. So God that's not, does not even bring it into the picture. So obviously there is no right to it. Right? Not because it's not there doesn't mean that we can go ahead and do uh, uh, whatever we choose to do. But God lays certain standards that we must establish ourselves in. And abortion is a great topic out there. It's debated in the university. The president has it now talking about it. Everybody is talking about this topic, abortion. And I tell you that when the Bible says we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principality, powers, we have an enemy. And that enemy is there to trap us. So it's there to fight against the laws of God. To bring in all these fancy laws into the country. To make it look like it is good. And he does everything to make these things that are bad look good in the eyes of people. For people to, to do it. For blood to be up on the land. For curse to be up on the land. That God can Go, go and punish us his job is to destroy his job is not to build up anything and when you're in the world your eyes are not open and you could be so blinded by these things and carried away with it and indulge in it but today I'm saying to a child of God somebody who has been converted somebody who's, who has given up the way of the world and now here in this walk this journey as a child of god i'm saying abortion is a no and i'm saying this that because many people they come into this walk as a child of god and some of them stumble right because sin we're shaped we were born in shape in sin right and god cleanse us and say now we're a new creature a holy nation a peculiar people and sometimes we fall back into the way of the world so i'm saying that if somebody who is a child of god now who has given their life to god and living for god and if anything happened and you're out of the will of god and you find yourself pregnant abortion is not the way is not the way hallelujah I want to look at the meaning of abortion what is the meaning of abortion they have many different meaning but I'm gonna just read two from the dictionary the Oxford dictionary said that abortion is the delicate the deliberate I'm sorry the deliberate termination of a human pregnancy most often performed during the first 28 weeks of pregnancy Hallelujah. Another dictionary, dictionary.com says, the removal of an embryo or fetus from the uterus in order to end a pregnancy. So basically we're dealing with the termination of a pregnancy here. And why do people really terminate the pregnancy? Why would a child of God really terminate the pregnancy? And I can come up with many different reasons why a child of God would want to terminate the pregnancy. As a child of God, you're expected to be groomed and you're expected to get married and be husband and wife before you actually start to having sex. Hallelujah. Now some people, the flesh, overpower them and they are indulging in sexual immorality before the marriage and a lot of times they get pregnant but yet if you find yourself that you're in this situation abortion is a no-no abortion should not be an option now when you were having sex you were busy hiding it but all of us know even when we were growing up in school we know that there's certain result for our choices so when you come together as a man or woman having sex the natural thing that can happen you can catch a sexual transmitted disease if you don't product 
protect yourself as well as you can get pregnant it's the natural thing to know that yes this is possible if you do not protect yourself now a lot of us women we're negligent and I would say that and also the men is negligent and we get caught up in the works of the flesh and we forget these things then we find ourselves pregnant now the work of God is in play here and God is saying that we don't know how the bones are formed into the womb now God has preordained us he has made us into the spirit first because when I read in Genesis 1 verse 27 God created us into in the spirit form before he actually made us in the flesh in Genesis 2 you read we read where he says that he made man out of the dust then he put man to sleep and while man is sleeping he took a rib out and he created woman to be in help for the man hallelujah now Throughout all the Bible history coming up from Genesis 1, I've read where when you get pregnant, there's always a space in between before a next child comes in the picture. So it tells us that God can take care of that time. when After we have a child, God can close our womb. I believe that, that if you're married and you have a child, you can pray to God and say, God, close my womb until your will and let your will be done and God can open up that womb at that point in time for another child to come in God has all of us destiny in his hands so if I'm supposed to produce four children then four children is gonna come if a next person is to produce ten children then that ten children must come if the next person must produce five one two name it it must come some women are busy crying out for God to bless them so they can have a child while some of us are doing it recklessly going about it the wrong way nevertheless let us look into the truth of it God says in Exodus 20 you shall not murder and I believe abortion is murder whether we like to admit it or not it is a life here and we're terminating that life now God have a purpose for that life and we decide to end that purpose so that purpose didn't get to do anything that it was supposed to have done we end it before it even begin that's murder and when I read in Proverbs 16 Proverbs 6 verse 16 I'm gonna read 16 17 18 and 19 i only read really want one out of it but i just want to bring out what god is saying here god is saying six these six things the lord hates yes seven are an abomination to him so seven things that he hates a proud look a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood that's really what i want to say here that God hates a hand that sheds innocent blood. Verse 18, it says, A heart that divides wicked imagination, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness who speak lies, and he who sows discord among brethren. But I really want to focus on verse 17 when it says, A hand that shed innocent blood. And I believe when you commit abortion, it's a hand that shed innocent blood. It's, it, it isn't different from a person who get up and kill that physical person. Because you're in that physical person life before God actually intended for it to happen. And just wait. When you're pregnant, you end the process of something that beginning. It's something that God created to, to prolong. A life to an extent and you end it before it come to life so it's a murder I don't look at it any other way now God is faithful to forgive now if you were in the world and you lack knowledge of these things and it happened you ask God for forgiveness God is faithful he will forgive you because he says all oh, things are passed away so when you did things in the world that you weren't your eyes weren't open up to the truth of the gospel and righteousness 
God is faithful to forgive you. But when you come into the walk and now you're learning the, the things of God, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't find yourself to fall in this situation. Hallelujah. And I want to just look at some scriptures randomly that speak of God knowing the person from they were in the womb of their mother and this is it speaks volume to to know that God can refer you refer to you when you were in your mother's womb and Isaiah 49 verse 1 reads listen to me O Cortland and pay attention you people from afar the Lord called me from the womb hallelujah from the body of my mother he named me can you imagine isaiah this is what isaiah was saying that god called him from the womb and named him from the womb job 31 verse 15 says did not he make me in the womb make him and did not the same one fashion us in the womb that was what job was saying that god is the same one that made us all in the womb Jeremiah 1 verse 5 said before I formed you in the womb I knew you before you were in the womb God knew you so God know you because he created you in the spirit first hallelujah before you were born I sanctify you and I ordain you a prophet to the nation so God purpose must be fulfilled fulfilled so he now put the spirit in this body that he formed in the womb hallelujah this is the work of god people psalms 39 psalms 139 i'm sorry says verse 13 and 16 says you bought you brought my inner parts into being you wore me into my mother's womb verse 16 says your eyes saw me and formed yet in your book all my days were written before any of them came into being this was david saying to god that god saw him before god saw his form before just like jeremiah he knew jeremiah before jeremiah was in his mother's womb psalms 22 verse 10 says i was cast I was cast on you from birth you are my God from my mother's womb all these scriptures are speaking of you when you were in your mother's womb so God have a destiny for all of us in Galatians 1 verse 15 it says but when it pleased God who set me apart since I was in my mother's womb and call me by his grace hallelujah can you imagine god called all of us before we were in our mother's womb so god created our destiny for us so no that's why i believe that abortion is wrong because that pregnancy is a destiny is a destiny for somebody there and the fact that you come to god know our weakness god know if we're gonna sin God know if we're not gonna sin he knows our tomorrow he knows our future so God see it all before it actually happened so if you sin and fall into that sin of sexual immorality and then you get pregnant God saw that before so God has ordained that person to be in your life it is not for you to take it upon yourself to let shame the devil is the one who brings shame the devil is the one who bring all these doubts and all this frustration and everything that you're gonna be looking at the devil is the one who's gonna bring it in the picture because he wants you to destroy that person you could be carrying a prophet just like he said to Jeremiah I knew you before you were in your mother's womb and you could terminate that prophet life that prophet could be coming to make changes to the world to bring a lot of changes you don't know what's going on you don't know what God has given you no hallelujah and I want to look at the life of Sarah and Abraham 
God gave Abraham a promise and he said to Abraham you are gonna be the father for many nations and Sarah was a old a woman and they didn't believe because of how old she was she was barren and a lot of women are barren and cannot produce but God had that power to open up the womb and he made a promise but Sarah couldn't believe it at first because she was stricken in age. She was a old a woman. And she didn't wait upon God. So she had Abraham had sex with her maid and the maid produced a child, Ishmael. Hallelujah. And Ishmael was not the promised child. He could not have the inheritance. But after some years, God finally fulfilled his words and blessed her with a child. That child was Esau, Isaac, I'm sorry. And you can tell that if she had actually waited up until when God was ready, it would have been perfect. But that's what happened to a lot of us. A lot of us don't wait on to the promise for God that God has for our life we run ahead of God and some of us really don't know what God has in store for us because some of us the devil has blind us so we cannot see our future to see how great it is to see what God is has in store for us so some of us just went on the wrong path and then we're caught in the trap that the devil set for us and he bring in this abortion here to oppress us to bring us in depression because there's something spiritually and significant about abortion and I remember I was watching my spiritual father preach and he said he was caught up in the spirit in heaven and when he was in heaven the angels were transporting transporting him from different different eras in heaven and one time he went to this womb where there was a lot of babies, children, different, different age. And these were children, he said, that people who killed or aborted. And the angel was teaching them heavenly language and they were growing. So they were busy growing in the spirit in heaven and the angels were speak, teaching them heavenly language. And he said that if we don't repent of it and accept jesus christ as lord and our savior and then god has forgiven us our sin on that day of judgment then that child is gonna be present and we're gonna see that child and that child is gonna be at the age that it should be when god has returned when jesus christ returned my god so we have to cut ourselves off from that sin when G when we accept jesus christ and savior and we're living for god we cut ourselves off now nevertheless as a child of god we still don't want to be going down that road now that we are a new creature no we don't but i'm saying if you find yourself in that situation god forbid he's still able to forgive you but i'm saying i don't know who i'm saying this to if you find yourself in a situation where you're slack off on your journey as a child of God and you find yourself that you venture into sexual immorality and then you find that you're pregnant remember this child is for God this child belongs to the Lord bring that child same way in the world up until now we read in the Bible that Ishmael was from the bond woman and Ishmael was a curse nevertheless God still heard that child cry when that child was cast out and was crying god still heard the child cry and still bless him and that's why you have them still they're so strong they're so wealthy because god remember them nevertheless even though the promise was not unto that child so god can change your situation god can make your sorrow into joy so somebody who out there find yourself in this situation remember god is faithful to forgive in 
first john 1 verse 9 it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness psalms 86 verse 1 says for you O lord are good and forgiving abounding in kindness to all who call on you so god is a forgiving god no matter what sin you commit he is faithful to forgive you know and nowadays it's not even like back then but nowadays it's so exciting when you're pregnant if you can watch they do like a baby reveal so you have like boy girl and you you have your family and friends come together and then <laughs> then you do a reveal of the gender to find out if it's a boy or a girl and after you have done like a baby reveal now when you're about eight months nine months or seven months you can have like a baby shower your friends your family they can treat you buy clothes buy many different stuff for the baby it's an exciting journey even though you know you're gonna become a mother and you have that great responsibility to make sure that child grow up in the right and proper way that child can bring you so much comfort so much love so choose life choose life or, or over death choose to overcome your situation and bring this life into this world now when when you journey with that little child as a baby and it's stressing but eventually they they they, they start to creep eventually they start to walk ah when you look they're one and, and Minnie is here to celebrate look who turns one <laughs> hallelujah it's it's quite a um it's a wonderful experience as well as it's a great responsibility to be a mother woman we have to become more united woman we have to stand up for what god created us to be even though he created us to be a helper to the man we have a greater responsibility to play in the form of a family we have to make sure that the family is doing well we have to do a lot so if it's the fact that you're not married and you're gonna be a single mother the fact that people are gonna know that oh you were committing fornication don't worry about those things God will restore you he will restore you that joy that child will bring you so much joy I remember one time there's a woman of God that I follow on Instagram her her name is Edda Lindsay and there was a time that she was led to make a speech about do not commit abortion and it so happened that there was a woman who was going to do an abortion and when she saw that on social media she was so encouraged she did not go ahead and about that child and she wrote either and this something became so big that she even went on one of the news channel because I mean she saved a life right there and you know what she did she had many people come together and she had a baby shower for that woman and it was she was all the way in England I think it was England but it was somewhere over that side of the world Europe and she had a baby shower people could contribute and she keep up to date with that woman up to now now we women we have to stand together if you find yourself in a situation where you need help seek guidance from somebody seek help but do not terminate this pregnancy do not take it upon yourself to do an abortion it is a sin and God would not love for you to do that so I'm, I'm saying to somebody remember God is watching do the right thing do what God wants you to do and choose the life abortion is a no-no thank you again for tuning into my channel journey of a child of God I hope this video does wonders for even one person thank you